Lizzie here. Today we're going to show you how to make Morgan. I'm not sure you're going to see it very well if I show you the pattern here but that's basically what it's going to look like. I might even change the front by the time you see you see the pattern. Um, but Morgan is a fantastic hanging ruler storage system which is just behind me here. So if I lift this up it's very heavy so it's got to go on the back of the door. <laughs> forgive me if I put this straight back down again so we've got we're using mesh which I think you can just about see so we've got a mesh pocket going right across the front here we've got a deeper pocket just behind that we've got a slim pocket here that takes my really big 24 inch ruler there and I think that's six or six and a half inches or oh, it's six inches I never can remember and it takes my 14 and a half inches as well um, this pocket takes my 12 by 12 in fact nearly all of my rulers are in this storage system we've also got the little pockets here a sort of a three inch three inch and a four inch so it means you can store your two and a half inch square rulers all your little rulers up the top here slightly bigger rulers here <sighs> you decide but it's got plenty of pockets and because we've used the mesh on nearly all of them it, it's stretchy so although this isn't biased the tape that we're putting across the the mesh pockets does allow you to put other things in there because it will stretch out um, it's, it's the first time I've used mesh and I really like it so perhaps we'll get some more projects with mesh so if you do purchase some nothing will be wasted at the top here we've got poppers let me bring this down we've got um, We've got poppers that hold on. It's actually a trouser or a pants hanger. Um, and I found that to be the absolute fantastic thing to keep this whole top section rigid. Because the last thing you want is for your ruler storage to be wavy. You want it to be flat and straight. And I found these um, trouser hangers um, absolutely ideal um, I'll measure them as we go along if you want to know uh, the measurement of mine um, so then there might be a little bit of adjustment whatever you use to your your little sort of loops here your, your hanging loops you could make just the hanging loops as they are and put a rod through um, you still might get a little bit of a wave on your um, Morgan uh, itself so I'll leave that for you to decide what to do but this was for me the ideal solution to keeping this really rigid um, and although it's it has actually got a layer of Decaville light and H640 which is like the wadding so it's quite sturdy it's quite a sturdy make and uh, very strong um, but nonetheless I found that these um, trouser hangers to be absolutely perfect to keep everything super secure um, it wouldn't work without the tabs these aren't strong enough to hold the weight I promise you this is really quite weighty it's got it's got 16 rulers in it and it actually it could take a lot more but because the hanger is so strong I try and get that to sit on there because the hanger is so strong it really really lends itself to uh, the, uh, carrying the weight and holding everything really rigid it'll certainly hang on the back of a door um, obviously I've got my perched here um, and, and to be honest it'll probably stay there um, but it could do with having a bit more of a secure uh, sort of attachment here I mean I've just got the hanger I, I actually quite like it it's been there it's been sitting there now for well possibly nearly a week and it hasn't fallen off um, it's been perfectly fine but obviously you know you, it's one of those things where you've got to decide where you're going to hang it but for me that is the perfect place because certainly over the last few days I've been bending down picking up a ruler putting it back and kept everything neat and tidy on my desk so this is Morgan this is the ruler storage system um, and as I've said it will take a 12 by 12 certainly take a 12 and a half by 12 and a half and it'll also take the 24 inch as well that's the pattern that's what you'll see I would say roughly on the website only because I might change that front cover if I can get a prettier um, picture to show because it's very difficult to show mesh very difficult as I have found out so um, how do you start well I'm going to as best I can I'm going to follow the pattern you know what it's like when you follow a pattern it never quite go according to plan so already I have 
let me show you i have made up my front sort of section if you like this is the main body um it's fused onto h640 the like of a, a foam um and then it's got the um uh Decaville light on the back so obviously that's that's fairly strong it's fairly fairly sort of padded there um, you could use your regular wadding you could use um, bosal in our form if you want to like the foam uh, I'll leave that for you to decide but it needs to be fairly strong and robust it's going to take all that weight I've already pinned on the first pocket and I'll show you when we get to it uh, what I did the pockets and um, there are two fabric pockets okay so this is one of them the other one is already attached to the front of my piece and all you're going to do is stabilize these with a soft interfacing so i've used g700 which is a fisaline product a, a lightweight stabilizer uh, interfacing is perfectly fine all we've done there is turned it over a quarter of an inch at the top and top stitched it and that's as that's as much as you need to do you don't need to fold again um, because we've put stabilizer on there's no fraying and it, it's only a pocket at the end of the day nothing structural you're not going to wear it um, we've got a piece of calico for the backing now you can use whatever you like I've got a really pretty backing on the on this one that I made here but calico works just as fun you 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 ain't gonna see it um i've already made up one of the mesh pockets so as we get to it we can have a look at that um i've got the big mesh pocket to put on the front it's terribly exciting isn't it um and the little one that will do right from scratch you also need the two um tabs and obviously all of this is in the pattern i've already got one kind of half made and i've got one to make with you as well so let's get started the first thing you're going to do and obviously this is very unwielding so w there might be times when you're not going to see all of it but I'll do the best I can so you can see the best of it so what I've done here is I've measured from this side se seam here or this side raw edge I've gone in seven inches and I've lined up the edge of my pocket on that seven inch line we're going to stitch half an inch from the bottom here up to the top we're going to flip it and then I'm going to baste it in place okay so um, possibly the over over the side camera is going to help us here like I said all the time this is very unwielding I'm going to be folding it and uh, trying to keep it out of the way it won't work but <laughs> we'll give it a good shot so half an inch um, I've put my pins in there just to keep that in place a walking foot very very useful for this project because of all the layers and just follow it all up to the top there we go and you'll find that when you nice strong backstitch by the way so let me just show you that <laughs> so this is going to get flipped over here yeah and then I'm going to top stitch or baste across here and up to hold that pocket flat now you might want to press this okay I'm just going to rely on my finger pressing here so let me just keep everything in its place and so we're just going to baste so you could lengthen your stitch um, two three two or three or three and a half even now we are going to be binding this let me just bring this in a bit more we are going to be binding this like you would if you're making a quilt um, now if you're not keen on binding and actually we use binding a fair bit in this project um, you could think about bagging out so right at the end if I can remember I can just explain what bagging out is so again like I said a walking foot would be really useful and just make sure that that's all touching the raw edges are touching each other little back stitch there's no need to go crazy because that's in part of a, a seam so that's our first big big pocket okay so the next one we're going to put on is the other fabric one which is here 
and um, I've already like I said before I've already top stitched long here I've turned it over that quarter inch so all you're going to do and I'll I'm going to hold this up so you can see it let me pin it and then I'll um, I'll bring it up so you can see and also pinning um, or, or using your clips the, like I say there's a lot of layers going on let me just get that straight before I show you that there's a lot of layers going on so again I would suggest putting on your walking foot right from the get-go and just leave it on um, and, and uh, yeah it's really useful to do that so I'm just pinning this pocket in place there we go and if I hold this up again there we go you can see that big bottom pocket sitting there nicely we're not going to divide this up because this one is the one that takes the 12 and a half or 12 inch uh, square ruler so it needs to be nice and strong it also needs to be nice and big so you can see how that's looking now so all i'm going to do is baste um down here across and up so we'll do that now and don't forget um like i say all these things will move a little bit if you haven't used a walking foot so you might end up trimming this back a bit so I'm going to fold this over a little bit I'll get a clip if you've got these really big clips this is actually handy for this big project because it's pretty unwieldy otherwise like I said so just follow all the way down so we're just basting this pocket in place it's, it's not structural the pocket will be held really by well the next bit of stitching when we put the mesh pocket on but also the binding at the end but it's just to keep everything neat <clears throat> So mine has moved slightly so please you know <laughs> do as I say not as I do <laughs> so we're just coming up that side where that big pocket is and just keep all those layers together as best you can you can see how I've got it clipped either side really handy to do that okay so that is <laughs> let me unclip it you can see so that's our big pocket put in place and like I said you might want to trim and no doubt I'll trim that before I actually put the backing on etc and the binding so now what we're going to do is the mesh pocket let me pop that down there now the mesh pocket is literally like this but what we need to do is we need to put some binding across that top edge so I've got my binding made I've asked you to make quite a bit of binding it's not bias it's just your regular binding so if we look on the overhead it might be easier let's see if we can just move the machine out of the way a little bit you can see so I've got a big big sort of length of this binding and all I'm going to do is cut it to size uh, I wouldn't bother making separate bits I would just cut it to size cut it a wee bit wider so you know you've got it covered there we go so it's obviously it's 16 inches across there plus a little bit there now as far as I can tell there isn't a right or wrong side there's a, a definite I wonder if I can use my calico if we look on the other keep it on there so you can see Oh, gosh I don't think you can see that well let's just let me just tell you that there's a definite honeycomb shape to it and it seems to sort of go across but it's stretchy whichever way you use it okay probably more stretchy that way than that way so you might want to think about how much stretch you want how, how you want it to be on your project to be honest if you're putting a straight binding on there it, you, it this loses elasticity elasticity but the pocket will still be able to stretch out so you could put cottons in there you know reels of cotton and bobbins and things like that if you want to so all we're going to do is put this binding on so it's you've got to imagine like i said there isn't a right or wrong so let's just assume this is the right side so it's right sides together 
um, and the binding raw edge is going along the well raw edge of the the webbing okay the the mesh sorry so all we're going to do is we're going to do this exactly as if you were making a quilt and you're binding a quilt so a quarter of an inch seam allowance i've doubled over my binding so it's obviously two and a half inches wide and i've just folded it in half length ways so all my raw edges are sitting together <coughs> excuse me and so i'm just going to trim the end of my binding we don't need that little scrappy bit quarter of an inch too much which is fine so uh, what i'm going to assume now that this is the um this is going to be the back so where we've done a really good seam if we have a look on the overhead again sorry about the flicking backwards and forwards so there's my binding attached and we're going to flip it over just as we would if we were making a quilt but i want you to see where you can see the fabric underneath well what i want you to do i'm going to take that way so you can see it better i want you to actually flip that up we don't want to see that that fabric there okay and you're going to just flip your binding to the front so this is the front now i'm just going to get a few clips um let's see if we can get a few clips in and we're going to top stitch this and this is going to be the front because it makes a really nice neat finish now the other thing i wanted to talk to you about was um, this mesh i would be incredibly careful about using the iron anywhere near it so i would finger press i would let it do its own thing um, if you want to put a warm iron on it then please cover it with a piece of cotton you know lightweight cotton um, just a scrap of calico would do and um, i would just very lightly press it if you want to use steam then obviously use steam but um, i would really err on the side of caution with using anything hot um, against this mesh I suppose it, and, and to be honest it's it's um, it's from Annie's you know by Annie's let me get the packaging there we are that's that's what you'd be looking for and I must admit I looked everywhere to see if you could iron it and I'm still looking it's made from 100% polyester um, it talks about that it's colour fast well it's white anyway although you can get coloured um, but it doesn't say anything about putting it near an iron and as yet I haven't tried so please by all means you try and tell me I just haven't had time <laughs> so all we're going to do now is top stitch so don't forget you're tucking that seam inside the binding you don't want it to be seen you want this to be pretty you want to look at it and think i made that and don't isn't that a lovely feeling yeah <laughs> oh dear right so i'm just tucking it in as i go and i'm doing a top stitch keeping everything really super neat and obviously you can use pins you could use your clips but just keep everything super duper neat, as neat as you can anyway. I showed this to my um, daughter, Ad um, Abigail, and she said, I want one, I want one, mummy. <laughs> so I said, well, you can have one of mine. <laughs> she could make one herself. Okay. So that's our binding put on the front. So where we've top stitched is the front because that's made it super neat. Unless you are an incredibly neat sewer um, and you can make it look beautiful on the front and back. But quite honestly, you're not gonna see the back. So let's not worry about it. Let's not make it a problem. So now you're, what you're going to do is pop this over the top. So let me do that and then I'll show you. I'll, 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 use, I'll use my clips because obviously pins aren't going to be terribly useful on a mesh it's so lovely and bright and cheerful it's super 
I like the blue that I did originally. I like those colours. They're my favourite colours, sort of a turquoisey blue. But sometimes when you've got something in your room, when you're working, that's really happy bright colours, surely that's, that's a good thing to do. Right, so I've clipped it on. I'm not sure it's clipped the best way in the world. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, dead easy, isn't it? But the end result is super. So I'm going to I'm going to use my big clips again, just to keep this whole thing under control, because it it will swipe everything off your desk. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> I don't. Right. So let's start. Little back stitch just to make sure it's held. Now you might want to go down a smaller stitch. Also be very careful about this mesh because it is stretchy. Um, so don't pull it out of shape. It will, if you pull it, it'll stretch. It's, it's, assume it's like working with an incredibly stretchy jersey. Um, you, don't, you don't need to do anything special. No special needle or thread or... It's 100% polyester, so my Gutterman polyester all-purpose thread is perfectly fine. Um, it doesn't need to be any special size needle. I think I've got a 12 in here. Um, I think 12 is pretty sort of all-purpose as well. 14 or 14. Um, so let's just swing it around. <laughs> Come up the other side. Yeah, so just be careful, it will stretch. Yeah? So um, just be careful when you stitch it, especially now when you're basting it you want it to be right right from the get-go i just want to check the back yeah we're catching it all fine so take those clips off there we are you can see what that looks like and keep that one big as well um because we've still got bigger rulers to put in here if we want to like our eight and a half inch square ruler maybe you've got bigger ones than that i've got my favorites i'm sure you have if you wanted to divide this front mesh up please attach it to this pocket first and stitch it up the middle to this pocket before you put this pocket on. You can divide it if you want to, but it kind of cuts down your options of what you can put in here. So bear that in mind. Okay, so the next stage is to put in the mesh pockets. Now I've already done one. Let's get the one that I've done. All these bits and pieces out of the way. So if we look on the overhead now, bring it down so you can see it. Let's just get this out of the way. I love my mat, but it does get in the way sometimes. I just pop a pin in there just to hold it back. There we go. So here we go. So I show you here. This is the obviously this is the what we've just done. This is the side. If I move it along like that, you can see that's the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the bottom of our pocket here we go. Let me just get it so it's right for you. So this is the bottom, or rather that's the top. Um, if that's where our big 24 inch ruler goes in. Okay, that's the top of our big pocket. Okay, then you can see the layers. So we want this to be level with that. Okay, now um, I've just got to make sure I've got the right side. Yep, that is the right side. So when we make our mesh, we're going to do the other one in a second. Don't bother with that side there because that's going to go in the side seam, okay? But obviously what you want to do is to make sure that the, all of these are neatened off with binding and we're going to stitch it directly now onto the, the base here, the, this fabric base that we've made. So I'm just going to pop my pins in there. Obviously you want to make sure this is absolutely dead straight. So depending on your seam allowances, whatever you stitched here and here will all depend on your gap here. So if I get my, I just happen to have a ruler handy. Here we go. On mine, oops, let's get it so we can see the correct way. On mine, it's, well, it's a, it's, well, it's not quite four inches. It's um, three, about three and a half inches up from, from here to here. And, and that's where we want to line our pocket up with. So if I put it here um, and put three and a half inches um, across here, then it, it's going to sit perfectly there. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm flashing a little bit. So I'm going to pop a pin in. Now, like I said just a little while ago, you've got lots and lots of layers going on here. You've got um, your your bosal, if you're using bosal. You've got your um, 
uh, you've got your um, Decaville light on the back of here as well. Obviously, you've got your binding, you've got your mesh, so you've got quite a bit going on. And so be aware that your pins may not go through all of your layers. Just, okay? It's just, it's so, like I say, so many layers here, you might find it'll go through some and not the other. But as long as you've got most of this pin down, you'll be fine. Um, so you can see how how it interesting it is to get a pin in there because it's difficult to bend that up. You haven't got your hand there to to do it. So I'm going to try and get it so it sits. Perhaps I want a stronger pin. Anyway, <laughs> so that's my pocket in position here. Now I'm going to stitch as close to this outside edge as I possibly can, keeping this as straight as I possibly can because you don't want it to be a little wonky. It'll, that'll annoy you when you when it's hanging up. You're coming down here and then we're stitching up to here. Obviously you're leaving that free. You're going to baste along here to make sure that's in place, along here, up here and really make sure that that's secure. There's a lot of layers going on here so just be careful that your machine can take it okay um, and uh, just take your time. So now we're going to put this under the machine to stitch. So again lots of layers and also an unwielding piece of um, fabric you can see I've got to bend it so it goes under my machine and this is quite a big um, neck I've got here big throat okay so I, well, I wanted to stitch that but I'll come back and do that so just again just keep your eye on things if that walking foot's still on there brilliant Take your time, keep it neat. That's just going to move along a little bit. Go as far as you dare to that corner there. You just about see where I am. And then bring it round. And try and make sure that this is parallel as well to your work. So when you look at it, you want that to be parallel and by all means measure from here to here to make sure it is. I'm going to trust my eye. A lot of these things I can give you measurements for but a lot of these things will depend on how generous you are with your um, folding back you know on your seams and on your tops of your pockets and things like that. So let's take that out and I'm just going to base this on the side and then that takes any worry away that's it super lovely so that's our first pocket <laughs> and now because this web this mesh stretches you really want to make sure that it's it's um it's not stretched but that it's both ends are the same width and if I look at this this could have gone up another eighth of an inch but you'll see what it looks like and you see so this is our first pocket here this is the four inch pocket with the mesh so now we're going to do the three inch pocket so I haven't done that at all I have, I've left that so if we have a look overhead all we're going to do is cut two pieces that go along the length of our piece okay so again we're going to cut it a quarter of an inch a little bit bigger because we just want to we don't want it short do we we want to make sure that it's going to fit when we stitch it on okay and then you're going to do the same for the other side again I'm just going to cut it here and in the pattern, once we've stitched this bit, in the pattern it tells you what this width here is for when you put your next piece of binding on. But I would suggest you do exactly what I'm going to do now. Keep everything... Um, I wouldn't cut any of this just yet. That's what I'm trying to say. So we've got two pieces of binding folded in half and we've got our three inch mesh pocket. So we're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to attach our two raw edges to the longest edge of the, of the mesh 
and we're going to do both sides don't pull that mesh keep that mesh spot on because like I said before it is stretchy so that's one attached okay you can see so now we're going to attach the other side I shall have to trim these back a little bit so a lot of this um, actually it's quite enjoyable working with the mesh but it's just it's interesting working with it because you've got to think about the fact that it will stretch like crazy if you pull it and um, sometimes it's got a mind of its own which which sounds like I'm saying that it's not very nice things to work with I love it we're going to be using it again I promise so if you buy some and we're going to be using it again um, it's just that like I said time and time again um, it's it's uh, you've got to keep your eye on it so if we look on the overhead again you can see that I've attached my binding so that's what it looks like stitched quarter of an inch down both sides so we're going to flip it over just like we did before um, so if I flip it like that you can see you're going to put the raw edge into the binding like that and you're bringing the folded edge over and you can use obviously your pins clips are better with this mesh I've found so just clip it in place if you want to put a little bit of a warm iron on this then like, just heed what I said before about the fact that it is polyester it wouldn't uh, react very kindly to a hot iron I'm pretty sure and I've trusted myself just not to use it I've just decided I'm not going to use it so look you're going to go all the way along tucking that in I'm going to machine this as I go this is your right side Okay, so this is what it looks like before we flip it's hard to see I know and then we're just going to flip the other side and top stitch that down so we've got two beautiful neat edges and then we come to the um, end so let's just start this off now if you want to you could start um, an eighth of an inch in if you think your machine will struggle with that first little bit because don't forget these uh, one of these edges what well, both I suppose are going into a seam the main thing is to make this front look really pretty nice and neat really tidy I think you'll um, I think you'll enjoy making this this is a really I have to say it's a really useful project it's it's what it was one of those things on my list of things to do but um, it's it, sometimes it takes a little while to come up with a design that would suit me and then and then I know it would suit you because we're all the same I'm a I'm a working sewer <laughs> so I want things to work for me Having it hung just there is fantastic. Okay, so this is the front, so don't forget which is your front, which is your back. Let's trim it. Now it doesn't matter which edge is the bottom edge or the top edge, there's no difference at the moment. What you do need to consider is you're only binding one end. So this is see how that, that wants to sort of it twists because it's that's the nature of it um, but you'll see that it's really stretchy so depending on how you use it will depend on how it stretches but you might want to put a damp cloth over that and give that a little steam so what we want to do now is to actually measure our end binding I do give you the rough guidance of what that should be in the pattern again it's all down to your seaming and, and how you how much you you use with your seam and you want to make sure that whatever that it length or that width is there you want a good half an inch bigger okay so I'm just going to cut mine to size like that okay so that's now mine cut to size and although as I said I give you the guidance of what this will be like for instance let me just quickly measure it that's about four and a half inches okay but what we're going to do now is we're going to use our quilters tape we're going to open up our binding like that 
we're going to get our quilters tape and cut about two and a half in um, two and a half inches wide but please don't worry if it's less than that or even more you can just trim it back and put the tape right up to the edge or the raw edge of your fabric there we go like that so you've got tape both sides and then all you're going to do is peel this back get your nail in there to press that glue down there we go on this side as well okay and then you're just folding that over so what I want you to do is fold it over like that on one end and I want you to measure that up like that I want you to have a look at it because you, you don't want this to be any bigger or smaller come to that so you want it to be just right so when I fold this one over obviously it glues it in place and once I open that up a little bit it's absolutely perfect okay and then we're just going to fold that back again now I would give that a finger press just put that crease back in because we've folded it on itself and it, it won't necessarily want to go back so give it a finger press nice bit of heat from your hands just going to take off my um, threads because it's uh, fraying like crazy this fabric and now we're going to do exactly what we've done before just remember which is your right side and your wrong side because you want the right side to be beautiful so on the wrong side I'm going to put my uh, my binding down so all my raw edges are together Ooh, that's it and I'm just making sure all of my edges now are sitting nicely on top of each other quarter inch seam allowance and then I'm just going to make sure that my end is sitting beautifully and then I'm just going to stitch right across I'll be interested to know how you get on with sewing the mesh so there's our mesh with our binding on the ends you just about see that so now what we're going to do is just what we did before is to flip this over and top stitch it in place so if you're flipping it from the um, back to the, over to the front again like I said just a moment ago there's lots of layers um, you might want to pin this you might want to use your clips um, use your stiletto if you need to to hold everything in place so use your your super duper sort of pokey tool and I'm going to start an eighth of an inch in and then I'm going back and that came right off because <laughs> it's thick it's slipped right off so I'm just going to raise my needle and bring it back on again that's it and then I'm just folding over I'm using my pokey tool to hold everything in place oops it slipped a bit there we go I think we're okay now and like I say just hold everything in place top stitch make it super duper neat as, as neat as you can be and um, when you come to the end just to make sure make sure that all your layers are sitting right inside the binding that you can't really see any raw edges like you would if you were you you sort of making something else like a you know like a quilt or a purse or something like that that has binding just be aware you're trying to keep this fairly neat use your stiletto again just to hold everything in place back stitch just to hold I'm just going to check on that bit there I think we're okay it's it came off a little bit one it's off one stitch but I'm okay about that because it's it's well secure so that is our second pocket our, our smaller one so now we're going to attach it to our massive piece here so um, I'm just going to bring this in so don't forget what you're doing is that you're going to place the mesh on the raw edge here and it's actually two and a half inches um, well actually I think it's two inches sorry from here to here that's the um, in fact that's upside down there we go that's the the distance here two inches okay so you just make sure everything is in place 
Now, although I've got an upside down sewing machine there, I've also got right way round sewing machines and sideways sewing machines. This is a sort of multi-directional piece of fabric. <laughs> just in case you're thinking, she's got that upside down. <laughs> So again, you just want to make sure that all of your lines are parallel. So clips here, see how this needs to come up a little bit. I'm really tempted, and she says, reaching for her scissors. Just to, because the mesh is stretchy, it means I've got that maneuverability. Because if you don't get this straight, it's going to really, really annoy you. I think that's a wee bit better. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a bit happy with that. So I'm going to just pop a clip in there just to hold it. There we go. I'll stitch that in a little while. So, yeah, two inches from there to there. Let me just check that for you. Yeah, there we are. Two inches there to there. It's a little bit, little bit out there. Well, I can adjust that. So two inches from there to there, and then you've got that top piece here. This is where your clips are going to go, your your um, your tabs are going to go, and your hanger there. So you want to make sure that that's sitting really nice and parallel, because you will it'll annoy you if it's not. So we're just going to stitch now. We're going to base stitch across here, up here, and across there. Just as I said before, make sure everything is sitting super parallel. You might not easy to get a pin in I promise you it's, um, it's so um, thick but just do your best to get some of those pins through the layers just so you're, it's holding where you want it to be so again I'm just going to pop that pin in there I think yeah I've come up okay it's just caught there right so let's stitch that pocket in place So we're basting from the top. Let me just get my big clips in there. It's a bit like being at the hairdressers, isn't it? When you have to have your hair clipped out of the way when they dry it for you. <laughs> right. Let's just get that so it sits better. That's it. So you're basting along that raw edge so that's about an eighth of an inch no more than a quarter of an inch you're coming right down to the bottom of your binding and then you're going right across your binding so try and keep that straight as i said use pins use your quilters tape that would be a really good idea and you're just catching that bottom seam the bottom, the folded part of the binding, that's what you're catching. If you take any more than that, obviously you're restricting a little bit perhaps of what you can put in that pocket because of course you're taking up more of the this, this, this sort of space. And then we're coming up this other side. Just make sure you take your pins out, don't stitch on your pins. And a nice back stitch at the top there to secure. Make that super, super strong. There we go. Let's take that out. And there you can see that's that top pocket attached. I just need to stitch this little bit. I might leave it until I put the binding on, just, just put it in the seam. So that's the, uh, the mesh pocket put in the top there. That's that three inch one. Okay. So the next thing is to make up the other tab so I've already done one as I said so you've got two pieces obviously this is one of the pieces this is the other piece you're going to put right sides together and as you put the right sides together you're going to fold the top over by a quarter of an inch and you can press that or in my case I'm just going to finger press and those two folded edges sit together at the top like that okay let's look on the overhead let's move this out the way so you're just folding it over about a quarter of an inch and those folded edges sit on top of each other okay you might want to put a clip in there just to hold it 
just make sure it's nicely finger pressed and then it will stay now if you wanted to and I did this on the first one I made you can top stitch these just so they're they're held down and they're they're it's nothing for you to worry about um, but this time I decided not to just to see what the difference was so then you've got a nice folded um, bottom part there so we're going to stitch from there to there and then from there to there well actually I'll probably stitch both from the top just to make sure that that is sitting beautifully okay so again quarter of an inch seam allowance So back stitch when you get to the fold flip it over make sure your folded edges are sitting together nicely and on the other side okay so take our clip out so just um, neaten off your um, stitches your the threads make sure there's no loose threads just take a little snip it off each corner where you've come up to the the folded edge so you can see I've just clipped here and here and then you're going to turn through now um, I've tried lots of gadgets with this if you've got a turning tool then great use it I have got one part of the turning tool which is actually under my machine this bit but I couldn't find the tube it's around here somewhere but this is perfectly fine a you could do it with your fingers if if you uh, are strong enough it don't forget this these um uh, these tabs have got h250 or you can put a couple of layers of g700 if you haven't got any h250 but nevertheless it's a medium weight stabilizer okay it's a medium weight so it's not a heavy weight like De decaville light you, you would struggle to turn this through um, but you're not you want a little bit of substance because this is going to take the weight of your ruler storage so let's just get this turned through of course it doesn't want to but it will <laughs> goodness me let's try that again there we go right let's just turn the iron on because one thing we do want to do is just to make sure that this is um, nicely pressed before we put our poppers on our snaps now um, I've used cam snaps you could use um, I would say not magnetic closures because you want this to be strong okay you could use velcro that would be nice and strong um, but uh, I just found that the snaps are uh, two of them it definitely needs two so don't think you can stint by putting one in <laughs> see you've got a waggy finger then do do make sure you use two snaps so let's give it a, a little bit of a press so make sure those folded edges at the top stay folded spend a bit of time on this obviously you know I'm always against the clock but do spend a bit of time on it let's just get on that back there okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put our snaps on just to the just on the tab so I'm just bringing my little dish here sorry if it's flashing let me do it so it doesn't flash there we go not too bad so with our heat erasable pen we're going to use one of our little rulers which of course is in the top pocket of my storage and let me just poke that corner out do you see it's not really square not perfect that's a bit better it's hardly anything so um, at the folded edge we're going to mark our places where we're going to put our poppers so we've come down a half an inch and we're going to come in half an inch so you're down half an inch and you're going to come in half an inch okay so it's a literally a half inch square there I don't know if I'm going to show it to you any other uh, any other way there we go try that so a half inch and a half inch and put your dot in use whatever tool you have this is a screw punch tool they're on my Amazon shop um, and the Amazon shop link is always on the front of my website 
So I just check to make sure both are the same. Just make sure that both components are the same. So let's get the right bits. There we go. And these will um, attach. They will sort of go on. You can you can move that about now and it won't fall off. It kind of you can sink it down and then get your tool and just squidge it. And you might want to stand up to give it some pressure. So squidge it again, make sure it's lovely and flat. I don't know if you can see that, but it's lovely and flat. And then get another button that goes in what would be the front. And the other half goes on there and it will squidge down and it won't come off. But obviously you need to flatten that little peg that's in the middle of your button just give it a nice squidge that's beautiful okay so we've got our two tabs sort of made up but we need to actually make sure that they go on our, our project okay now this is done after we've done the binding but um, I'm going to show you now how it works because what I'll do is I'll, do, I'll put the binding on but obviously um, well I'm going to top stitch it so we could do it if, if you're happy to sit and wait for another sort of 10 minutes of me doing this I'm sure you don't mind. So when we look at this the, on the overhead, this is the top of our work here. OK, let's do it so you can see. And I've got this trouser press here, this trouser hanger, which opens up. You kind of um, pull that down There we go, and it opens up, do you see? And this goes either side of your project. Obviously, we're going to have the binding on in a sec. But what you want to make sure is that your your um, tabs will sit nicely over the top of that. I've got all the measurements and then it comes back to the back and we're going to stitch it on to our project um, after we've got the backing on and the binding. But just I want you to eyeball it but because whatever trouser hanger you're going to use and I do suggest because look how this locks nicely. I do suggest you use one of these because it needs the strength and it needs this rigidity along here to keep your project from from not collapsing. So let's put the back on. Let's put that to one side. I'm going to move my machine, open this up. There's a little bit here I need just to trim. So let's just do that quickly. Just a small little bit. I noticed that before. OK, so I've cut my piece to size. It's obviously exactly the same size as you cut for the front. And you always spray. Mustn't forget that clip there. Might you always spray your wadding, not your fabric. OK, so let's just get some spray in. So I'm using a 505 spray. Use whatever you wish that you're more comfortable with and we're just going to stick this down so try and make sure that it sits exactly on top of your outer piece and it might be that it's you haven't cut it quite the same but don't worry about it in, in fact it's probably better to make it bigger and then cut it to size. I think I would be more than happy doing it that way. So let's move all my bits and bobs. Try and, like you would with a quilt, you're pushing everything out. Usually you push from the middle out, quick being good. Just make sure that all of these edges sitting where they're supposed to be sitting if you need a little bit more glue and certain place please do that just give it a few seconds just to settle and glue that down there we go not too bad at all so that's the back you can see that's the back in place um i there's no quilting involved with this. If you want to put the back on and then put your pockets on, by all means do that. Um, and then it's quilted. But obviously you're going to see those marks or those lines of stitching from the front, uh, sorry, from the back 
Um, so I'll leave that for you to decide, but I decided just to literally place it on as is and, and then just stitch. It's not a huge piece. So if you wanted to not do the binding and bag this whole thing out, then all you're going to do now is you're going to do right sides together with your front outer and your back outer. So right sides together. Personally, I would stitch along three sides, two long, one short, leave one whole short edge open, turn through, press well, and then fold under and top stitch that um, long, short the long short edge where you turn through okay that's what I would do um, but the binding is quite nice it's quite pretty so I'm just making sure that I'm happy with what I'm seeing making sure all my layers are sitting nicely to be honest my packing is probably a wee bit too big on one edge but it's only an eighth of an inch so I'm going to ignore it I'll put the binding on I actually I'm putting the binding on the back and bringing it to the front so bear that in mind that I'm going to cut it because I'm going, doing it from the back. And it literally is, a, oh, well no, it's not even a quarter of an inch, it's an eighth of an inch difference. And that, that comes about if you haven't pressed your fabric before you cut. And it, maybe it's been folded up in a, in a cupboard or a drawer and all of those creases will alter how you cut okay so bear that in mind press your fabric before you um before you cut it so there's our piece okay and there's our piece that's the back so i'm going to put my binding on on the back and then bring it to the front and top stitch just like we did the pockets because it makes a really nice neat finish so here's my binding we're going to do it exactly as we would if we were making a quilt um, because of all the thick layers it doesn't lay quite so um, neatly as if it was a quilt because we've got Decaville in here and, and Bozal or whatever wadding you're using. So I'm going to leave a tail of about eight inches and start right in the centre on one long side. Quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not going to measure that eight inches I'm just going to kind of go with my gut. So I've left about an eight of an eight inch tail. I'm coming down the uh, long side first and I started halfway down and like I said if you've got that walking foot on there fantastic so this is where our unwieldy piece of fabric needs to be clipped because I can assure you it's going to push all your coffee cups all your work cups with your pens and pencils in because <laughs> it's it's unwielding it's big okay so you're coming up to the corner you're going to stop a quarter inch away a little back stitch I break my threads up to you what you do then I'm going to fold it over we're going to do our regular quarter um, 45 degree so if you have a look to the side camera you can see I've folded it over this raw edge here should line up with the raw edge of your piece and then you're folding it back so you're not cutting your binding all I've done is broken my threads just trim that little piece of fabric there because that's giving me a the wrong uh, the wrong look let's say so you're folding it you're folding it at the 45 degree and then you, you fold it back so let's do that again so fold 45 degree and then you fold it back on itself like that okay we've done binding quite a few times um but it's a good to have a reminder every now and again so start now i start a quarter inch in you might want to start a quarter of an inch from the raw edge um we, do you know what we all have different ways of doing these things um, and some people are really really good at binding it's just you know I, I, I don't mind binding. I don't, I'm not frightened of it. I'd never say I was perfect. So we're just coming to that second corner. Little back stitch, quarter of an inch away. 
I'm going to bring out, bring my binding round so my raw edges are all sitting in line together and then I'm flipping it like that, making sure that I've got exactly that 45 degree and if it's not right, keep on doing it until you've got it right because that will make the difference between a good corner and a, and a not so good corner. Okay, so turn it round. Again, I start quarter of an inch in, quarter of an inch out, if you like. So if you think of uh, putting a little ruler on that corner and marking a dot. Okay, so I'm coming down to where my pockets are and I know I must get that um, pocket sitting straight. I don't want it to catch, so I'm going to put my clip back in there. I think that's okay. I have to say, these are the sort of things that I'm just going to turn my... I can hear my iron clicking, I'm just going to turn it down. Uh, these are the sort of projects that would look really well on a craft store. And although it's very big, it's not a massively difficult project. Um, you'll have to cost out all your fabrics and your waddings and stuff like that. There's my pocket, just to make sure it's sitting where I want it to be. Um, but it's quite visual, isn't it? Quite visual. Right. Keep it on my table as best I can. <laughs> so, coming up to the third corner now. stitch I'm stopping a quarter of an inch away so just just remember that I take it out of my machine and um, I fold it keep my eye on everything fold it back on itself and it's right where there's a 45 degree join of the fabric well it would be wouldn't it you could put money on that so let's just fold that again there are gadgets and tools out there that can do um, binding for you to do the 45 degrees and all those sort of things and they're fabulous and I've probably got half a dozen in my cupboard somewhere <laughs> but uh, quite honestly I got used to doing it this way if those tools those sort of tools help you then please use them right let's just um, keep that clip together so there we go threads there okay so let's uh, have a look on the overhead here I need my little ruler so don't forget this is the the back of the work this is where we started gosh this fabric phrase like crazy um, can't be a quilting cotton can it if it's so bad it's lovely it goes very well with my, my project anyway so <laughs> there's my gap so this is where I finished this is where I started. What I want to do is overlap these by two and a half inches. So I'm going to cut my fabric about here. Now you might find you'll have to open up. You, sorry, you'll have to, you might have to find you're gonna, you're gonna um, unpick some of this. I want you to see how you go with this because although I've left about six inches, you might find that that is not enough. Because the pro this project is so unwielding, you want as much give as you can. So what we're going to do is, if I, if I, let me get my pen. So we want two and a half inches. Let me get it so it's right for you. So we want to mark two and a half inches from this end here. I'm sorry about the flash on my ruler to here. Okay. Let's just put a little mark there. So I've measured two and a half inches there to there. And we're going to lay this fabric over the top the binding over the top and I'm going to cut it at that two and a half inch line. Now if you were doing binding of a different size, let's say it's a three inch strip, you would have a three inch over overlap. Okay, we use two and a half because that's the width of our fabric. And all we're going to do now is we're going to stitch those with a 45 degree angle. Now, if you don't want to do that, because that's a little complicated, this is what you're going to do. You're going to, let me just open that up. You're going to fold in, let's say, half an inch 
and that's where you would start stitching okay so that is now folded over half an inch you've got a beautiful beautiful neat edge and when you bring your tail down all you're going to do is well you can put it in between if you know if you've got that if you've got that left open you can um, put it in between um, and that could be your join I mean it's you know you might as well to be perfectly honest but if we could stick to doing um, the regular the normal 45 degree angle then all you're going to do now is join these together so I need just to flip this around so it's best for me so open up your binding so let me just get my hands in there sorry I've got to lick my finger so open up your binding so it sits flat like that then get this one and you're going to cross it over so it comes down so imagine this is one long strip and it's going to come down this way so this corner here goes to here okay so let me just close that all right so let's open it up again I'm running out of fingers open it up like I say I think I might need to undo this a little bit and you're just going to flip it to there and because this is so stiff you know it doesn't want to move and and quite honestly you know it's it's fiddly I don't, I'm not going to lie to you it's fiddly now I'm going to pop a pin in there just to hold it and I don't care about scrunching it up because I've got an iron <laughs> I'm going to pin there as well oops I'm going to do it like that so underneath there can you see there's the corner and that's sitting absolutely where I want it so it's crossing over like you would do if you were making a 45 degree um, join in your binding and you're going to stitch from here across to that other corner here okay now you might want to get a ruler and a pen and draw that line but I'm fairly confident with my stitching so I know I can do that um, by eye but you might want to lay that down on your table and draw a line across from there to there so if we open that up which would be difficult to do now because I've pinned it um, you've got you've got the top one go the bottom one going like that and the top one going like that so coming like that just as you would normally so like I said and I, I wouldn't lie to you it's tricky because of the fabric because of how much um, sort of uh, stabilizing we've done so let's just give it our best shot but um, again you might want to open it up the seam so instead of six inch gap make yourself a 10 inch gap do make things easy for yourself there's no rules I'm not going to check what size gap you left I'm not going to come around your house and check and if I do I like um, coffee and I like coffee and walnut cake okay so as long as you remember that so I'm going across to the other corner like I said you might want to draw a line Anything to help you now I'll take my pins out let's go to the overhead again because before you cut anything I want you to check that your seam fits so before we trim this angle back you can see let me hold it there's my stitching there before we trim it back make sure that that fits what I'm going to do is stitch that to my project and just sort of finish that gap off so let's just pop it under the machine start stitching where you left off dropping all sorts now off the table <laughs> so that is our piece stitched and all I'm going to do now I'm going to get a quick iron and then I'm going to flip it over to the front 
Right, I have um, ironed my binding over to the front so it's nice and neat on the back and we're going to top stitch that binding all the way on. Now if you're not confident with this please revert to your hand stitching um, but the reason why I did it from the back to the front is because it really doesn't matter what the back looks like because this is going to be a, um, a tool really. It's not going to be something like a bag where you're going to see both sides um, and trust yourself that you're going to get it right but you get a much much neater finish if you do go from the back to the front with this binding. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it with quilts but it, it's fine it's, it's acceptable. When we get to the corners we're going to trim our corners so where we've got a point like that we're going to get our scissors and we're going to trim that right down right when I say right down at least a mil or two mil away from the, the stitching to make sure that our 45 degree angles aren't too bad because of all the bulk it won't be quite the same as what you have normally done, done with a quilt but it will be as, as neat as you can possibly get so bringing in the machine we're just going to now I would suggest you pin or clip this entire piece before you go ahead and start top stitching but let's just go for it and again you'll notice that it's quite a big project to have on your desk and on your table but I want you just to take your time if you um, keep your machine on a low speed that keeps everything under control but just trust your instincts all you want to do is make sure that you cover your stitches you'll see your stitches um, just move my pattern <laughs> you'll see your stitches on the front and that's kind of like your guide so your folded edge um, just just literally touches those those stitches um, and as we come down to the first corner like I said you're going to uh, clip this and, and make it neat so I'm coming to that front that first corner I'm just going to chop all that bulk away and I'm going to as I come right up to it <laughs> I'm going to do as neat a 45 degree angle as I can get and use your stiletto just to hold everything in place fold your fabric over and then try and do your 45 degree like I said it, it doesn't sit half as neat as if you were making a quilt because you've got all the the layers um, and different fabrics that you're using so come round and just carry on Okay, so I'm just coming down the home straight, just got six inches to do, something like that. So I've kept consistent all the way around. I've cut all those corners off and just I've kept this clip together so it's a fairly neat little package to, to uh, sew. It's a good tip. Let me just cut that bottom thread there. And there's our piece bound so it's lovely and neat and that's what it looks like okay I think it looks fab we'll put all the, all the rulers in in a little while so now what we need to do is to put our tabs on to take our um, to hold our trouser press in place so let's just move this out of the way so we've got a bit of room on the desk okay so what we need to do is just get it an angle where you can see it let's do it like this so obviously our trouser press is going to go between the layers and you're obviously going to measure from corner to corner to make sure that's sitting properly now i do give you measurements so don't think that uh, you have to guess this yourself i do give you measurements but it's just a good way of if you've got something different to me a different length oh well, i was going to measure that for you um so that's uh, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten inches. So that's that's a ten inch trouser holder hanger. 
and these are going to sit nicely over the top there and I do as I say I do give you the measurements in in the in the pattern but because mine might be thicker than yours it might sit differently so I just want you to be aware of that so I want you to think that's where the poppers are going to go so I'm going to draw a line there I'll make sure that these are exactly the same distance either side and I'm going to draw a line here and in my pattern if I get my pattern here let's just have a quick look at what it says um, let's have a look one moment let's just get the right page here we go Uh, here we go yes five inches in from the long side so let me get one of my other rulers and two and a half inches down from the bottom so that's the measurement I give you in the pattern so if we measure in five inches from the side so that's the center point which is there five inches from the side again so that's our center point here two inches two and a half inches from the top so Let's get the right bit of the ruler. So we're just bang on there. Okay. And two and a half inches. So that's the mark there. Oh, well, let me just check again. <laughs> yeah, so that's the mark there. Let's just take that one out. Confuse ourselves. There we go. And uh, it's two and a half inches down from there, which is there. Okay, so... The where you're going to put the poppers is identical to how you did it before. I'm going to put my mat underneath ready. I'm going to get my little ruler in. So there's my, my mark here. So that's five inches in and two and a half inches down from there. And from this from that measurement, I'm going half an inch that side and half an inch that side. Okay. And with this one, it's exactly the same. So there's my five inch mark there. Let's just check and make sure. Yep. And I'm going again, again, I'm going to go a quarter, uh, sorry, half an inch this way and a half an inch that way. Let's just take that little mark out there. So it doesn't confuse me. So there's an inch between my poppers. And if we have a look at the tab, you can see, if I do it like that, there's an inch between the center of that popper and the center of that popper. Right, so what we can do is I pop, pop our mat underneath, protect our table, bring in our tools again, and whoops, <laughs> send them flying, and then make our holes. Just one screw is enough, so just bear with my put my poppers back in the tray there we go same with this side so I've made my mark so it's there and there so the button goes underneath this time on the wrong side and we're going to have the the other half and again it will slip down it's quite a bit of bulk on there so it might not want to go all the way so while that's sitting there, just get your tool in. And sit that out into the dish. It's better if you stand up, I must admit. <laughs> there we go, that's a bit better. I always do this so it's not comfortable for me and then I wonder why I struggle. Um, I'm just going to stand up to put some pressure on. There we go, so that's one done. So again, button on the back, through the hole, so you're on the other half of your snap. Try to get it so it's sitting there comfortably and you can get your tool in. Uh, it doesn't want to behave itself, of course. Let's give it a little gentle nudge. 
get the tool in, pop it over the top, make sure it's sitting there, give it a little swivel so you know the button's sitting in there, give it a squidge. Okay, so we've got those the first two, second two, button in the back. That's going to sit on top of there. Open up your tool. That's it. Get it so it's sitting in the dish. Give it a squidge. Now, I mean, there might come a time where um, when you do, when you look at it, it's not as um, flat as you want it to be in there you need it to be flat so I would suggest you go in there again and squidge it again you know press it into your machine again so it does it does uh, flatten out so the little um, little a piece of plastic the little sort of pokey up bit needs to be squidged out flat for the poppers to sit together nicely otherwise they it won't they won't so you'd need to make sure that they do. So let's do that again. So that means that both of our poppers are now in place. So let's just get our tabs in and they can be clipped on now. There we go. So that's this both sitting nicely on there. And then you want to get your um, hanger again because this is all like I said before this is all down to the thickness you can see mine's quite thick so this really does depend now on where it's going to sit so I'm trying I'll try and get that equally in this in the middle so let's do it like that um, I want to bring it down a bit so it's sort of sitting near the binding push that back and lock it and then these come over to the back if I flip that over Okay, let's get rid of the mat. I flip that over. You can see how nice and tight that is. Now we don't obviously we don't want to stitch anywhere near these poppers. So I suggest that you just tuck that in. If we have a look at the one that I I did earlier, which is so heavy, woo, it just sits. They just sit on the top of the poppers like that. Okay. So let's pop that back. So I can wriggle this up a bit and then I can make sure that when I do the stitching across here that they're going to sit just on top of those poppers. I've obviously put my hanger a little bit higher up so I better do the same. So they sit there. Now in all essence you don't need to mark that or measure it but what you could do is just get your heat erasable and do yourself a line. And again with this one and just make sure it's exactly the same place which you know it's going to be and then whatever the case you're going to stitch an eighth of an inch through all of the layers from back to front and you're going to hold those in place i suggest you do two rows of stitching you don't have to do a rectangle normally you know when we do these sort of things we do like a letterbox there's no need to do that just do two rows of stitching and that's then really secure. Right, let's uh, bring the machine in. Ooh, that's one ruler down. That's why you need a ruler hanger. You can pop them back in, <laughs> they don't fall off your desk. Okay, so we're going to take this off. So take your tabs off and just make sure you've got them going the right way. And then you're going to lie them on your line, the line that you made, line the edge of your folds up with that. You've un unpopped, can you see? There's my tab there. Get them so they're central. Lovely little back stitch to start. All the way across, so you're, you're now neatening that, those folded edges. Now, because this is so unwielding, it's, I mean, it's fabulous, don't get me wrong, I would go backwards as it is. So keep your eye on your stitching. 
try to follow your stitching and you're done so the second one just make sure you've got them going the right way <laughs> you'd have to ha unpick if, if not okay a little back stitch all the way along do another back stitch and then track your stitches back so I'm keeping my speed down keeping an eye on everything and that's now lovely and secure just cut off your threads keep everything neat okay so that's our tabs now stitched in place so flip it over Get your trouser press or whatever, well, I keep calling it a trouser press because I keep thinking that's the press, but get the trouser hanger, pop it over the top, get it so it's in the middle. That's it. A lock it. And you obviously want the hook. These, these hooks swivel, but obviously if you've got a static one, you want to make sure that it hooks over to the back. And then just bring your poppers over, your tabs. Pop them in place. And there is our second Morgan. Isn't it lovely? Lovely and bright and colourful. So if we were to transfer the rulers, bear with. Okay, so let's transfer the rulers. So this one could go in there. I've got my 12 by 24. I've got my 14 by four and a half. Um, I've got my 12 by 12. Um, I've got two 12 by 6s they could go in there in fact they could go that way in my mesh pocket um, I've got I've got a seam press thingy and I've got a right angle ruler very rarely use it but you never know that can sit in there as well or it could sit in there um, I've then got what's this a six and a half inch so that can go in there I've got a three four by seven it's a funny one isn't it four by seven a one and a half by six four by four um four and a half by four and a half these are obviously very essential rulers um i've got my two and a half inch square now that is essential i've got my add a quarter six six inch that could go there and I know I've got two more. Whew, I've got my 10 by two and a half. That could go in there, why not? And then I've got my add a quarter 12. So that could go there. Or perhaps could go in there as well. I'm not sure I can get it in. There we are. <laughs> so that is now, it's heavy. It's so full. It's got 16 rulers in there, plus a couple of other bits. It's strong because we've got this hanger at the top here holding that all rigid. And obviously the popper tabs, I'll give it a bit down a sec. The popper tabs holding it in place. It could do with shifting along a bit, shouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, you get the gist. <gasps> I've to put it down. So that is Morgan. And um, I think from all accounts, there we go, you see the pretty back now. I think you'll make loads. Oh, I just found another ruler. Six and a half by one and a half. That can go in there. <laughs> I'll have that behind me now so I can work with it. But you can see that when it sits properly, you can see that's where it sits like that. Perfect. So that's Morgan. And I hope you make loads. <laughs>